What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of The Happiest Hour on Earth. So if you listened to our episode last week, you know we were chatting about all the upcoming attractions coming to the Disney parks in the next year. So there was a lot of exciting stuff, but this week we decided we're going to talk about movies and shows that Disney is putting out this year. So we've got uh, our top 10 list here. There's some fun stuff coming that we're pretty excited to talk about. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. All right. So before we jump into this list, and, you know, there, there is 10 that we have here. And it was actually kind of surprising that it didn't seem like too many mm-hmm. movies were coming out this year. Yeah. Some series. And there's going to be some series that are off our list just because we don't really have any connection really to them. And it's just something that we weren't really interested in. Also, we're not counting second seasons or like third seasons of shows. It's all new stuff coming. Mm-hmm. And so really, really excited to jump into our top 10. And this is compiling movies and series. Super exciting. But before we jump in, there is some news that just dropped. We know what the next Star Wars movie is going to be. And it goes into production this year. So exciting. Yeah, super exciting. feels like it's been exciting. a while since one's come out. I, yeah, it has been a very long time. We've had our shows. We've had our you know series and everything. But we're getting a movie and it comes from a series. We are going to be getting... The Mandalorian and Grogu. Not just the characters. That's the name of the movie. The Mandalorian and Grogu. I feel like they could have maybe come up with a little bit more of a creative name. Yeah, I know. I kind of hope that this is kind of the placeholder name and they change it to something. And maybe the something is something we're not supposed to know about already. You know, something that's going to come out in another show and then they're going to release the name. I hope because and then it's like, are you watching The Mandalorian? Or the Mandalorian Grogu, like I don't know, just yeah. it's the same kind it's of thing. Strange, so, strange title for a movie. I would be fine if they changed it. Um, interesting thing. I don't believe we are going to be getting a season four of Mandalorian before this movie. Maybe there will be a season four after this movie. I'm not sure. There is going to be Ahsoka season two before this movie. So mm-hmm. that's already in development. And we know that this movie is going to be the combination of the stories of the Mandalorian. Ahsoka and Book of Boba Fett. So it all kind of comes to a head. And then this movie is going to be like a big climactic chapter. Um, Maybe not the ending of everything, but the big, big event. And I was thinking with season three of The Mandalorian, they had all this talk about the Mythosaur. And I just kept wanting to see the Mythosaur and kept wanting to see it. And I was like, man, they just teased it. And we didn't get anything else. Yeah. Anything else. And then at the end, you finally see it one more time. I was like, come on, like I wanted it to be about this. I think they probably were like, we have this movie coming out Mm -hmm. and we want to share the big reveal of the Mythosaur on the big screen. Mm -hmm. Something really huge. Makes sense. You know, the lore goes that whoever tames the Mythosaur is the rightful ruler of Mandalore. So that could be what the movie's about. And, you know, if that's the case, I want to see that Mythosaur on the big screen for the first time. Mm-hmm. Out of theaters, and I think that's probably why they did that. I think so. Because that's going to be was, so epic. It was a little tease in the show. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, a little, just to get to see it. And that's it makes all. sense that, it makes sense why we didn't see it yeah. enough in season three. Um, mm-hmm. Interesting fact, this was going to be Dave Filoni's first theatrical directorial debut. Mm-hmm. And then it came out today that John Favreau is actually going to be directing and Dave Filoni is producing it with Favreau and with Kathleen Kennedy. So yeah. I don't know if there's something there where they're like, let's give a little John the, <laughs> you know, the, the, the reins rain. of this, but super exciting news. Um, cannot wait to see what they do with that, but mm-hmm. should we jump in to our list? We're starting with number 10 and it's number 10 for a reason because we don't know much about it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Our number 10 is literally just an untitled Disney animation film. That's its title for now. Yeah. And it comes out November 27th. We don't know what it is. (laughs) We don't know what it is. We just know that it's coming out November 27th. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it could be anything. It could be an original. It could be, I guess there's been talk of frozen three being Mm -hmm. worked on. So who knows? Maybe it's that. I don't know why they wouldn't just say so if that's what it is, but it's, it's weird. I feel like it's, pretty late because usually i feel like we know 
at least a year in advance yeah. what's coming like out. 11 months. Yeah. Kind so I'm curious strange. if they're going to be pushing, I don't know, maybe, maybe they're like, we need to like really kind of work on our stories a little bit. I know that Bob Iger said they want to focus more on um, quality than quantity. So maybe they're going to like flesh out the story a little bit more. Or maybe yeah. they will hit that November 27th date. I mean, always good to see a Disney animation film. They come mm-hmm. out every year around Thanksgiving. So um, so it's on our list, even yeah. though we have no idea what it's going to be about. The anticipation's but, killing me. What is yeah, it going to be? I know. And and that's really a, you know, they've kind of had some slumps. So I always look forward to these to see if there's going to be one that really yeah. brings that it wow back. Yeah. yeah. Yep, same. So we'll see. We'll see about that. We shall see. But that is our number 10. Um, but our number nine is actually going to be a series. And we are recording this on, oh, on January 9th. The show actually came out tonight. So (laughs) super interesting. So this is going to be the show Echo. And so the synopsis of this um, from, you know, just their IMDb page or something like that. It says, following the events of Hawkeye in New York City, Maya Lopez is being pursued by Wilson Fisk, which is Kingpin, um, his organization leading her to return to her hometown in Oklahoma, where she must come to terms with her past reconnect with her native american roots and embrace her family and community and so excited for the show i'm a little bit burnt out on marvel they were like marvel has put out a lot yeah of series we In haven't seen some of, of the time. movies we haven't seen some of the series we did see hawkeye loved it um mm-hmm. and you know we saw a lot of other marvel stuff i'm a huge marvel fan but some of the shows i'm like it just didn't really piqued my interest so yeah it's a little this one overblown I, I think yeah i loved hawkeye and seeing kingpin in that and um and the whole daredevil stuff so that's gonna be cool to see this is actually the first tvma release by marvel studios so that will be interesting it'll probably be pretty bloody so i'm not sure if you'll be like as um yeah. stoked to watch it but i like the character a lot um you know, if you haven't seen uh, Hawkeye, she's like a deaf character. And I think she's also like an, amp- she has like an amputated leg or something like that. Right. So she has like two mm-hmm. disabilities. Um, but I, I really love that there is like that deaf representation in there. My grandma was deaf. And so I had gone to a lot of, a lot of like deaf events in the past and like, you know, communicating with her and learning sign language and all that stuff. And mm-hmm. so that's really cool to have a character like that. Yeah. Um, but I think I think the hard thing with Marvel is that they had all of their big characters, all of these amazing Avengers movies, all this big stuff. And then it all just kind of came crashing down and they're focusing on like smaller characters. And when you, when you hit such a big high, it's hard to get people interested in smaller characters again. Like it's Mm -hmm. cool to do new stories and there were some great, um, you know, Loki, WandaVision, um, even winter, uh, Captain America, winter soldier. Yeah great shows but it's it's there is marvel fatigue and i I want to get over that again yeah um but it's just a lot like they're they're doing too much you know it feels like if if there was maybe i don't know it seems like there's not really much direction where in the past i would always talk about kevin feige and like how he was able to seamlessly bring 20 what 20 different movies all to this point of Avengers and like the direction was amazing. And now it just seems so. Yeah. There's so many storylines. There's so many characters, new characters. Like there's just so much to keep track of. It's hard for me to like, especially as a parent, really hard to keep track of because we've already, we can't see everything in in theaters. Yeah. yeah, It's, there's a lot filled in there, but (laughs) But um, so number nine, good though. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to see it, but number eight. Yeah. Number eight. So number eight is going to be, Moana. So there's going to be a series coming to Disney Plus at an unknown time. We don't have the date yet, but it sounds like it's going to be really fun. It's going to be a musical and it's going to continue the story of Moana. We're big, big Moana fans. So anything involving her, I'm about it. And I think a show will be really fun to, to follow, you know, a new story. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, th- we saw Monsters at Work, which was like, mm-hmm. you know, a Monsters Inc. show. I and I thought it. that they did it really well. It was really funny. And yeah. so to co- continue on a story like Moana and now like their tribe 
are able to like explore the seas again. I think we'll just see what they're like after that big, big event. And so that'll be, that'd be really cool to see. Mm -hmm. I love Moana and I want more. more. Yes. Yeah. Always want more of Moana. Yeah. So we're sure. pumped. Um, and on top of that, another series coming to Disney plus is Tiana. Which is our number seven. Yes. Yeah. Number seven. Also an unknown date. So yeah, D that. they're both in 2024. Yeah. They just haven't like they released haven't the dates. Yeah. Specific dates. Yet, yet so. they released the date of the untitled animation. Yes. Yeah. Like what is going on? Yeah. I don't understand, but, um, but it's going to be fun. The show will follow the title character as she sets off for a grand new adventure as the newly crowned princess of Maldonia, but a calling to her New Orleans past isn't far behind. Yeah. That's from Disney. So we'll see what it's about. It sounds yeah. like it's going to be good. I love Tiana. I'm ready for it. And it's yeah. exciting because it's probably going to be right around the time that the ride opens that we'll be getting just a lot of Tiana. Yeah. I really hope they kind of release them at the same time. So I it's like the show perfect. that you could watch. Um, I'm excited to see Maldonia, mm -hmm. see, you know, what that's like. But I also want to see like her restaurant, Tiana's Palace, and like how that's doing. And like, yeah. just, oh, you know, the dream that she's always wanted and see how she's like handling I don't know, the the pressure of like owning her own restaurant. I don't know. Yeah. Just kind of and then it would be kind of I don't know if they'll do this, but it would be kind of cool if there was one episode that kind of had to do with the story of the writer, maybe like introduce characters that we're gonna meet in the ride mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, um, that would be cool. I'm so curious. I feel like all of it is such a mystery. The ride, what the show's gonna be like. There's yeah. a lot that we just don't know yet. Yeah. But it'd be really cool it's to get her own series for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, so number six is going to be the show Agatha Darkhold Diaries. This comes out September 19th. And more Marvel. Yeah, yeah, more Marvel. But this one I'm I'm not because we loved WandaVision so much and loved Katherine Hahn mm -hmm. as Agatha. I mean, WandaVision, that was one of the I think it was the first. It was a crazy show. Uh, Marvel show on Disney Plus, mm -hmm. and it was just so well done, and it got me excited every week. I was like on the edge of my seat, like what's gonna happen? Yeah. And Agatha was so creepy, yet you know, funny. She was great, yeah. And I love seeing her in the crazy the comedy character. episodes and the dark episodes. Crazy, she did so good. Props to you, Catherine Hahn. Um, mm -hmm. and so we know a little bit about this show. Um, a synopsis of the first episode says that we'll see Agatha Harkness finally break out of her spell that she has been trapped in. She can't wait to go back to her old murderous ways only to find out that she is powerless. The only way forward for her is to embark on a per perilous quest to get her powers back with the help of an unlikely friend or two. Is that going to be like Wanda or vision or something? I don't know. I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe new characters. Yeah. Maybe new characters, but that'll be really cool. She was so good in that show. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I also heard that Aubrey Plaza is going to be in the show. So both of them together, the chemistry is going to be great. We actually saw both of them together in Parks and Rec. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh Catherine Hahn was the campaign that. manager, right, for Ant-Man's uh, campaign. Yeah. Oh <laughs> and, then, and then Aubrey Plaza. That would be really cool. Easy. But I, yeah, I'm just really, really excited for that because I think they're going to handle it with with care yeah and that's a I character so. that i'm already invested in you know mm -hmm. so that'd yeah. be really cool i'm excited for that one too okay so that brings us to our number five which is mufasa the lion king which comes out december 20th so the premise of the movie is simba having become king of the pride lands is determined for his cub to follow in his paw prints while the origins of his late father mufasa are explored with a retelling from rafiki yeah i think we'll exciting. see a lot of like scar and mufasa mm -hmm. drama Stuff we've never seen before yeah brother rivalries yeah we're huge, huge Lion King fans, so mm -hmm. I'm excited about it. The previous live action, I feel like, was... You like, know. I enjoyed watching it in theaters, but like people yeah. said... Never could wanna... possibly compare yeah. to the animated. There's yeah. just no way. And I'm curious what they'll do with this one, because everyone said, like, their faces almost seem lifeless, because they're going for the photorealistic yeah. animals, which obviously a, a lion can't be that expressive. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering if they'll turn that up a little bit. Yeah, um, I know. I'm curious, because I think that it was, like, ridiculed pretty hard yeah. by people being like, this 
does not look right. Yeah. Even so. though it was like beautiful. Yeah. It was like so beautiful. But yeah, maybe when you have the expectation more. of the, you know, the animated film and then yeah. there's that, it's like, you know, yeah. it's a little off, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, so it's directed by Academy Award winning filmmaker Barry Jenkins, who made Moonlight and If Beale Street Could Talk. So I've never seen either of them, but he is an Academy Award winning filmmaker, which yeah. is, you know, makes me have some faith in the movie. We'll yeah. see. And bringing the cool thing about bringing Hans Zimmer back too is because it was awesome hearing the music that we knew from the original mm -hmm. in live action. Yeah. But what can Hans Zimmer do with a totally new I know. Lion King? That's like what that I was would be really too. cool. Like all these years later. Yeah. So curious what it'll sound like, but my gosh, the score for the original is just it's so good. So good. So I kind of have, you know, I think this is almost more exciting to me than the the straight up Lion King adaption. Yeah, I think so because too. Because I want to know more story. about Mufasa. Yeah. And to see that in that, you know, photorealistic mm -hmm. um thing could be a great way to tell. Now we've mm -hmm. seen you know, movies like Maleficent, which is live action that we didn't really yeah. care for too much, but it was like that kind of story you didn't know about. But I think it could work for this. I love that it's coming out in December. Mm -hmm. I like, you know, when right movies come Christmas. out right before Christmas, you know that they're putting a lot into it. You yeah. Know, it's a big time to watch a movie. So <clears throat> I'm really, I'm really pumped. Me too. Me too. And I, yeah. I, I think I agree. I'm more excited for this than I was for the previous live action because it being its own story, I don't have as much expectation mm -hmm. Yeah, and or, like won't be comparing it to the original, which we obviously love. So yeah. Yeah. I actually that? know someone whose brother would actually was working right on, on Mufasa, the Lion King. And mm -hmm. so obviously didn't ask him anything about it, nor would he have told me anything about it, but yeah, he was working on it for, um, a good couple of years doing like the animation so cool. uh, for it. So really, really cool. He's also done some other John Favreau stuff. And that's the thing too. I John Favreau's the jungle book is incredible. So good. Like that was a live action. I think that was the best like live action one for us. Yeah. It was yeah, done so well, one. but the kid who played Mowgli just crushed oh, it. We should watch that. Yeah, we should again. watch it again. That, yeah. that, was, that was definitely a favorite of the live action. Yeah. It was so Such good. a good one. Um, but going on to number four, we got Deadpool 3, which comes out July 26th. Now, Emily actually hasn't seen any of the Deadpool movies, but... A little disinterested. She's a little disinterested. It's very gory. It's just um, not my thing. You not know? your thing. So, yeah. So, I kind of slotted this in, <laughs> you know, and she, she probably would have switched this probably with Mufasa. Or you maybe wouldn't oh, have yeah, this on the sure. list. But... I think what puts this at number four is that we are getting Hugh Jackman back as Wolverine after he said Logan was his final, final appearance as Wolverine. And this movie actually takes place after Wolverine dies in Logan. And so they said it's going to be involving time because the Logan that's going to be, you know, untouched. He does actually die in that movie, but since it takes place after I think they said it involves time travel or, you know, multiversey type stuff. So we will see Wolverine and Deadpool together, which, you know, in the comics was such a big relationship. So to see them together is going to be amazing. And then also seeing Hugh Jackman in his like more comic accurate suit is going to be great. So, um, so that's super, super exciting. Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, he is Wolverine. Like, I don't think anyone else could play that character. And so yeah. I'm really, really pumped to see him back on the big screen. Um, yeah, I think it's really, really exciting. Yeah. Maybe we should see the other two. And I could tell you when to close your eyes. It's been a while since I've seen the other two. Like, they're not my favorite. Um, they're funny, but even me sometimes, it's the gore is a little intense, but, <laughs> um, but still it's, it, it's going to be worth it, but I'm going to be doing the next couple, um, just cause they're more, he's more well-versed on these. Yeah. So we're, so number four, Deadpool three, we're jumping into another show. Number three is going to be skeleton crew. And so this comes out in 2024. 
It's unknown when it's actually going to be coming out, though, within this year. This is a Star Wars show that we're going to be getting, and I have a very big interest in Star Wars. So anytime something Star Wars comes out, even if I'm afraid that it's not going to be the best, I'm still really excited to see it, to make my own judgments. And so this Skeleton Crew show uh, is going to be following four children who end up on an adventure to make their way home after being lost in the galaxy following a discovery they make on their home planet. It's said to have a lot of like Amblin vibes. So like E.T., um, Jurassic Park, you know, that that kind of feel. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, you know, hoping for the best, it would probably have like a Stranger Things feel. Because mm-hmm. everyone talks about Stranger Things having that Amblin vibe, obviously a little bit more um, intense. Yeah. But it could go towards that. It could go more like a kitty tone. Um, kid, kid E, not like kitten um, tone, <laughs> but yeah, kid E tone. But one way we could kind of get a tone for the film is that it's going to be created by John Watts, who created and directed all the Tom Holland Spider Man films. So probably going to be that kind of vibe, maybe a little more on the side of like incorporating that kind of goofy high schoolness with a little more like Stranger Things thing, because it's going to be more like. Um, adventure and mysterious, I think. So that'd be cool. It's also featuring Jude Law. So to see Jude Law in a Star Wars film, mm-hmm. it's going to be um, pretty interesting. Yeah, there that is very interesting. Yeah, there was a leaked trailer that I saw, like when Star Wars Celebration happened, and it looked it looked really fun. And so um, I'm excited to see that. I think it's going to be eight episodes. Um, I think Jude Law is either going to be playing a Jedi or a Sith or something like weird, that. Someone, I think there weird. was something with him and a lightsaber so i'm not really sure Mm. um what his role will be but i think i think it could be really good yeah and if it's not really good for us then hopefully kids who are in that like you know junior high high school phase will really love it Mm -hmm. Um, give them some star wars to kind of connect to yeah because i feel like star wars has really made a resurgence over the last like i don't know decade maybe yeah maybe not even Seems like a lot of kids are just so into it now, probably because of how much has Mandalorian, come out. Grogu, yeah. yeah, and then for the like our kid kids, even. Yeah. yeah, young Jedi adventures, young Jedi yeah. adventures, our son loves that. So, yeah. a lot of a lot of good Star Wars stuff out there. So, yeah, I'm curious to see what um what this one's gonna be like. Yeah, and um number two is also Star Wars. We are going with the Acolyte, which is unknown when it's gonna come out, but it's said to be 2024. This show I've been excited for ever since I heard the premise of it. And so just sit back, close your eyes, and just picture this. Okay, so (laughs) The Acolyte has been described by Lucasfilm as a mysterious thriller that will take viewers into a galaxy of shadowy secrets and emerging dark side powers in the final days of the High Republic era. In this story, a former Padawan reunites with her Jedi Master in order to investigate and solve a series of crimes, but the Jedi will reportedly encounter sinister forces that pose a threat to both the Jedi Order and the Republic. So if you don't know, the High Republic was this time of just pretty much prosperity and, um, you know, the, the old Republic, you know, Sith were gone for a long time. And they're just like, oh, we don't have to worry about them anymore. Mm -hmm. And right around this time, about 100 years before The Phantom Menace, because that's when we see Darth Maul and um, Palpatine working working together. And that was like the first Sith after a very long time. Um, Some dark side users start coming back. So that's going to be really cool to see like them kind of thinking in their minds like, are the Sith back? Like what Mm -hmm. is going on? So that's going to be really cool. Really hope they do it well. I know it's featuring one of the main characters is, I don't have his name written down here, but he was in Squid Game. And um, I think won uh, Emmy or something for that. Or he had some sort of accolade for that role there. So that would be really cool um, to see him in a Star Wars film or show. But I think we need more like Sith dark star wars because we don't really have that like we have moff gideon like the the empire stuff Mm -hmm. we have a lot of the empire not so much sith stuff Sith stuff, yeah because where we are in mandalorian is kind of 
not really around the sixth time. So th- this is going to be really cool to see. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very cool. Looking and the High Republic's also very like elegant. So I think, I think some of the Jedi there had like lightsabers that almost look like fencing swords or like, mm. it was very like elegant and Royal. So that'd be kind of cool to see, um, to see that kind of period. Wow. But our number one, Emily, yeah, let's get to let's, it. Let's do it. All right. So our number one is going to be Inside Out 2. Yeah. This comes out June 14th, which we're really excited about right around his birthday. Yeah. We'll probably be doing that for your birthday. Oh, I'm totally. Assuming. Totally. <laughs> it's usually the case. So we're so excited. We absolutely love Inside Out 1. And yeah. our son has recently discovered his love for it. So I think it's going to just be a really fun one for the whole family. Yeah. I'm, I'm so excited about it. Um, so Disney and Pixar's Inside Out 2 returns to the mind of newly minted teenager Riley, just as headquarters is undergoing a sudden demolition to make room for something entirely unexpected. New emotions, <laughs> joy, sadness, anger, fear, and disgust who've long been running a successful operation by all accounts, aren't sure how to feel when anxiety shows up. And it looks like she's not alone. So there are a couple other characters coming that I guess we have had announced at this point. We haven't seen them yet, but we have Embarrassment, Envy, and Inui. Uh, yeah, I don't. Which I didn't know what that was, but I think it's like boredom or yeah. something. Yeah. It's interesting. I've never heard that word before, but yeah, yeah. It's an emotion that is coming to inside out. Yeah. So really want to see our, our, our baby is waking up right now. So we're going to wrap it up a little bit here, yeah. but there's so much to be said about inside out. I really hope that they nail this movie because it could be really, really good. It could kind of flop. So I'm, I'm very curious to see yeah. what that will be like, but I know really hope they hit it out of the park yeah, and it's scary person. to deal with like puberty and all the emotions going through. I really hope that they can connect to other kids who are going through that and also for adults who are, you know, just thinking back on their life and everything. So yeah. I really hope that it's that's it's done well. That's something that Inside Out One did so well. I so like perfectly you can connect to, you know, Riley and even the parents, you know, yeah. like oh, there's totally. so much that you can connect to in that one. So yeah, I'm very excited to see what they do with Inside Out too. Yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be good. I know. It, it's a hard task, but they did it with number one, so I really hope they could do it with number two. Yeah. But really, really pumped to see that. It's yep. going to be a puberty. It's crazy. It is crazy. It's going to be we'll a wild how, movie. How Riley handles it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. It, honestly, they could do a number three. One, kid. Two, teenager. Three, adult yeah. trying to figure out life. I am all for a third one. I think this yeah. this series will be perfect. I think three would be a good amount for this. Yeah. Someone who's like in college trying to figure out jobs and just live on their own and all that stuff. I think that'd be perfect. I think it'd be so cool. Yeah. Um, Agreed. Yeah. Fear would be a big emotion there. <laughs> <Just kidding. Yep. laughs> what am I doing with my life? I don't know how to be an adult. So crazy. Totally. <laughs> but, um, but anyways, that is our list of 10 movies and series that we are most excited for this year we want to hear what you're most excited for if you're watching on youtube go ahead and drop a comment below if know. you're also on youtube go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe it really helps out our channel and it's free to like and subscribe so just click one little button and you're there if you're on a podcasting platform you could hit five stars um review us follow us on those pages that helps out our show a lot and then you could also go over to youtube and subscribe as well um, Please do. Yeah, <laughs> and so we have some exciting topics coming up. We cannot wait yeah. um, for Tuesdays now when we record because there's some really fun things we have coming yeah. up. This yeah, was our do. parks and movies kind of uh, excitement, but we have a lot of different topics, so we can't wait to talk about them. We should probably get our babies soon. But thank you guys so much for listening, and we will see you all next week. See you then, guys. Bye. Bye.